Well, hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining the God Discussion Show tonight. We have got a fascinating show lined up for you. Uh, we will be speaking with the principals of the Military Religious Freedom Foundation. And for those of you who are regulars to the show, we normally have Adam on, who uh, does the, the news review with me. Uh, but Adam just got back from Peru. He finally took a vacation after seven years, and he is just exhausted. And so with me to discuss the news tonight is my very good friend, Leah Burton, who um, is the author of the forthcoming book called, uh, what is it, Palin, Palin's America, God, Guns, and Greed? Leah? Yes. Yes, hello. Uh, yes, that's it. And Leah is an expert on what we have been talking about called Christian Dominionism, and she is also um, on the board of directors of the Military Religious Freedom Foundation. Um, so, Leah, thank you so much for uh, stepping up to the plate and helping me out here. Absolutely, and I thank you for asking me. Well, um, you know, one of the kind of cool things, I've always had an interest in archaeology, um, there's some sites around the area where I live in northeastern Arizona, and I've done a few digs myself. Uh, but they found this really neat ancient site in Afghanistan near Kabul. And, uh, you know, that area is bombed. There's this great big huge uh, mining area that the Chinese are running. And there's been a lot of looters. But anyway, they found what might be one of the oldest um, Buddhist um, settlements ever in that area of Afghanistan. And so despite all of this bombing and these different things co going on, um, as they've been excavating it, uh, the, some of the pieces are just unbelievably beautiful, very intricate, and they're finding uh, statues that are like eight to nine meters tall, perfectly preserved. And uh, nearby at this site is um, what is considered the oldest um, Christian community in the Middle East. So what do you guess? How, how old would you think that is? Like zero? <laughs> like zero, yes, the beginning of time. Yeah. Well, anyway, I was kind of surprised. Um, it, it dates to the third century. So that, that is the, the oldest known Christian community in the Middle East, and it's the third century. So, you know, that, that's sort of interesting. But, you know, in, in Afghanistan, it used to be, uh, before it was primarily a Muslim country, you know, it was uh, Hindu, Buddhist, that type of thing. And, um, you know, there was this religious knowledge test, the results that came out by the Pew uh, Forum, what was it, last week, I think? Yes. And with respect to world religions... And, and even their own faith, Americans are pathetic. They really, they do not understand their own faith. They do, let alone world religions. And so they found that the atheists and agnostics understood it the most, followed by the Jews, and then followed by the Mormons. And oh, that, oh, but no, but I, I got an email my, today, as a matter of fact, from um, a fellow named Craig Huey, who sends out emails to everybody trying to swing the vote in churches, which that's another story for another time, um, how they do this. But he claims right here, and I'm looking at it, that the Religious Knowledge Quiz, a project of the Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life, consists of 15 questions related to world religions. Here are the results of people taking this quiz. He puts it, number one, evangelicals got the most right. Secondly, Mormons came in second place. Atheists and agnostics came in third. And, and so what was his rationale for that? It, they, well, they don't have to have any. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. It's just that those of us who actually try to do research and we really con concern ourselves with trying to base what we say and, and the things that we put forth, uh, um, you know, base it in evidence, these people don't. They just make this stuff up. And the problem is is that he then goes on to list um, about 20 churches in California where he's going to be appearing to discuss um, which politician you vote for in California. Oh, honestly. Yeah, you know, honestly. we've got that test, um, the 15-point quiz that people uh -huh. put out. Um, it's linked at God Discussion. You can just do a search there uh, at, at GodDiscussion.com. So I took the test thinking, oh, well, I'm not going to know this, you know, because they made these results sound very, you know, bad, and I thought this was going to be really hard. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I aced it. I took it in about two minutes. It was, I, I just, you know, if that's the basis of, of people's religious knowledge, 
um, you know, that's culture. Uh, I mean, everything. Understanding uh, world politics, you've got to understand some of the religious base. And well, it just, yeah, you, have to, you know, but see, we have to keep in mind that there, there's a huge block of people in, in not just America but worldwide, and this is not necessarily their fault as much as, as it is the preaching that they get who actually believe that the books are named after the disciples that went out fishing with Jesus. They don't understand that those aren't actually the people. They weren't really with him. Exactly, and as our guest last show, uh, Tom Quinn, author of What Do You Do With a Chocolate Jesus, pointed out, I mean, it's a history, really, of Christianity, uh, that these book, the authors of the four Gospels really were anonymous and not known, and, and the names were arbitrarily tacked on to them, and those books weren't even written until, what, like 80, 80 years after Jesus? At the earliest, as the evidence is 80, um, the common um, understanding is 300 years after the death of Christ. Exactly. Well, moving along in the news, another um, survey came out, um, I think on the 5th, and I think it was Religion in, in America or Religious Public, I can't even remember the group that did this, but they went out and they interviewed the beliefs of the Tea Partiers, and it didn't surprise me that they are basically the same uh, GOP as before, GOP members, and um, a very almost half of them were uh, Christian fundamentalists. And um, so anyway, I termed it today in my article about this, um, the, the, the religious right in drag. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're being drugged. But here's the thing, is that what we can't do is, and I think this is one of the things where people get a little bit complacent, especially on um, who are not uh, Republicans, um, you know, the, the old Republicans, which were more of the secular, or they may have profound faith in their own personal lives, but they really believe that it did not belong in politics. Um, it, the religious right, as powerful as it was, um, was more innocuous compared to the Christian Dominionist movement. And um, so we can't, we can't really look at them as the same. They certainly have um, drug in um, members of the old religious right. But they have also um, manifested into a much more extreme faction than the religious right ever dreamed of being. 